What is hyperviscosity? Why does it occur and how is it managed? Viscosity of any fluid, which uh, uh, essentially in very simple terms as a non-physicist that just tells you about the thickness of that fluid. And here we are concerned about the viscosity of blood or plasma, which is circulating in our bloodstream. And there are uh, situations where our blood becomes thick or more viscous, which is not good for circulation because it can cause problems and symptoms that can become potentially life-threatening. So when the viscosity of the circulating or you know, circulating blood or plasma um, becomes high or goes up, that is by definition hyperviscosity. What causes hyperviscosity? And there are two broad uh, categories or two main reasons for hyperviscosity. Either we have more blood cells, especially more red cells or white cells, or we have high amount of protein in the blood, especially larger protein elements. Uh, so from a uh, myeloma perspective um, and from Waldenstrom's macroglobulinemia perspective, which is a related disease, uh, the high viscosity is caused by a high protein level in the blood. It could be either a very high IgM level in Waldenstrom's macroglobulinemia or very high level of uh, IgG or IgA level. IgM is more commonly associated with hyperviscosity because it is a bigger molecule and as a result it makes blood thicker faster. Uh, and why is hyperviscosity bad? Because it affects the circulation. Um, and patients have symptoms. So if patients develop hyperviscosity, they can notice symptoms that essentially point towards uh, uh, interference with the flow of blood. And the more common symptoms associated with hyperviscosity are uh, some kind of bleeding. These patients tend to have bleeding from the nose or gums. So that is one symptom associated with hyperviscosity. The second uh, symptom that is common with hyperviscosity, again, it's because of the flow of blood in the retina or eye, and these patients can have some visual blurring and floaters and uh, situations like that. So visual symptoms with some bleeding, and then this can also cause neurologic symptoms. So patients may notice dizziness, uh, they may have uh, confusion, um, some patients may present with shortness of breath, and in extreme cases, it can even cause seizures and coma. But again, luckily, most of the patients present early, and especially uh, depending on the type of disease, when we suspect that, we do the right test, and that way we can help, uh, which can help us in making the diagnosis. So that is the definition of hyperviscosity, especially as it pertains to plasma cell disorders as well as uh, Waldenstrom's macroglobulinemia. Just one additional point that there are other situations uh, uh, like a condition called polycythemia where the cause is different. These patients have a very high concentration of red blood cells because this is an abnormal condition. Their body is making more red cells than they need. And that uh, thickness of red cells affects the circulation, and these patients can also present with hyperviscosity. If you add hyperviscosity in your blood, once your myeloma gets treated and protein levels begin to drop, would it go back to normal? Myeloma patients, uh, fortunately, do not uh, uh, suffer that much uh, from hyperviscosity as uh, you know, Waldenstrom's uh, patients do. But yes, absolutely, it is directly related to the amount of protein in the blood. So if someone starts out with an M protein of 8 grams and an IgG level of 13 gram, and once you uh, give that patient say two cycles of induction treatment and the total protein level goes down, IgG level goes down, M protein goes down, and with that viscosity goes down and the symptoms go away. But there are other ways of treating hyperviscosity symptoms uh, relatively uh, rapidly, uh, and that includes a procedure called plasmapheresis, where basically you connect the 
through a venous catheter or a line, uh, patients vein to a machine and the blood can circulate through the machine, which is designed or programmed to take out excess protein. So there one can relieve the symptoms right away within a few hours. You can remove move the excess protein. But then this is not the definitive measure because the underlying cause, which is increased production of protein, persists. So that has to be treated with anti-myeloma or anti waldenstrom treatment. But uh, a procedure like plasmapheresis or plasma exchange can rapidly lower the protein and help relieve the symptoms. 